Live from KSA 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Coming up, the president is back at the White House after spending nearly three days at the hospital. I'm Andrew Dimbert in Washington, D.C. with the latest. A comfortable start to our Tuesday morning, looking back towards downtown San Antonio. But it got quite warm yesterday afternoon. More of the same on tap today. We will find out with Mike Coast Trade, see if there are any new wrinkles out there, like maybe perhaps some fog in different parts of our viewing area. Good morning, everybody. It's Tuesday, the 6th of October. Thanks for starting your morning with us. Yes, it did get pretty warm yesterday. I guess because we had been so lucky with the temperatures in the afternoon, I was like, whoa, it's a little, little much for me, I guess. But it is relative compared to what we were experiencing July yes, and August true. and the early part of September. So all in all, could, could be considered refreshing. Okay. Yes, but speaking of relative, uh, relative to the normal temperature, we are well above that. We are above that by almost five degrees yesterday, and that's going to keep going through the weekend. So it's going to be a pretty hot weekend. We're looking at some mid-90s around here, so you're not going to like that. Not good uh, <laughs> running weather. So uh, right now, yeah, we do have a lot of clear skies here in town, and temperatures are about what they were at this time yesterday. I think we may drop down a couple of more notches. We still have uh, dew points that are down in the 50s and 60s, but notice how these numbers are up just a little bit. So you step outside this morning, it's like, yeah, it's a little little on the humid side. Uh, not too bad, but you can just kind of smell it, if you will. Also, as Mark alluded to, we do have some fog off to the east. Gonzales, LaGrange, and Victoria. Some uh, well, fairly thick fog there around Victoria at quarter mile visibility. So we'll have to watch that in our eastern counties, especially. And then a lot of it, you know, a lot of times tries to sneak into, oh, say, even New Braunfels. Randolph sometimes gets a little bit of that fog. So just be on the lookout for that over the next uh, couple of hours. Ragweed is definitely Definitely on the high side. A lot of folks are suffering from that. So this morning, like I said, maybe fluctuate a couple of degrees, uh, drop down one or two, three here or there. Some clouds fog east and 64 degrees, then plenty of sunshine. Yeah, it's going to be another warm one, 89, just like yesterday. Like I said, that trend continues and then some. So we're looking at a hot weekend. The latest on the tropics, what is Delta going to do? That's coming up in a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. And here's Officer Nick Solis. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Mike. Good morning, everyone. Hope you're having a good start to your Tuesday morning. All right, so we did have some uh, heavy to moderate traffic there. 1604 southbound at 151. Talk to my buddy at Transguide. That is now clear, but we're still dealing with this. This is going to be northbound I-35 at Watson Lane, where the main lanes of northbound I-35 are completely shut down right now due to a 18-wheeler accident that leaked fuel on the roadway there. Don't know how long this uh, um, closure will be, but right now you're going to have to divert to the access road. Now, this is near San Marcos area, so just keep that in mind if you have to head in that direction. All right, construction 90 at 36 right now, and we're also dealing with construction at 151 and 410. Hopefully this clears uh, soon, and also some construction on I-10 at Dominion again. All right, Mark, uh, Stephanie, back to you. Thank you, Nick. New this morning, a woman is in custody after police say she sent officers on a chase on the north side overnight. Just before two this morning, Castle Hills police say the woman drove away from them after they'd been watching an apartment she was in for potential drug trafficking. Police say the woman led them down on a chase towards McCullough, where she almost wrecked on a baseball field, it was finally stopped at Bassey and West Avenue after her tires were shredded. She was then detained by police. Officers say they found meth in her car and she admitted to going to the apartment to buy drugs. The president is now back at the White House after spending nearly three days in the hospital for COVID-19. His doctor signed off on the discharge and with less than a month until the November election. Meanwhile, his opponent, Joe Biden, isn't missing his words about who he thinks is at fault for the latest outbreak around the Oval Office. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has the latest. This morning, President Trump is back at the White House, released from the hospital, discharged by doctors at Walter Reed Medical Center, going up a set of stairs to a first floor balcony, President pausing to take off his mask, even though he's still contagious, and giving two thumbs up before posting Don't this video about the virus on Twitter. Don't be afraid of it. You're gonna beat it. We have the best medical equipment. We have the best medicines, all developed recently. Trump spent nearly three days at the hospital receiving treatments typically reserved for the most serious COVID diagnosis, including steroids and antibody therapy. Trump then suggesting without evidence that he may be immune to the infection. I know there's a risk, there's a danger, but that's okay. 
And now I'm better, and maybe I'm immune. I don't know. The president is still believed to be positive for COVID-19, but his physician says he supports Trump's release from hospital care while acknowledging there still may be risks. He may not entirely be out of the woods yet. Dr. Anthony Fauci reacting to the president's situation on CNN. You're not out of it until you've gone several days out and doing well, but he certainly does look very well. Shortly after President Trump arrived back at the White House and removed his mask, Joe Biden told an NBC town hall that Trump still doesn't get the bigger picture. Now, what is this macho thing? I'm not going to wear a mask. What's the deal here? Be patriotic, for God's sake. Biden continuing his criticism of Trump, saying point blank, the president bears responsibility for catching COVID. Look, anybody who contracts the virus by essentially saying masks don't matter, social distancing doesn't matter, I think is, is, is responsible for what happens to them. And Trump will continue to receive around-the-clock medical care, according to the White House, and physical access to the president will be limited with those near him required to wear personal protective equipment. Andrew Dimber, ABC News, Washington. And here at home, Bear County is making progress in some areas when it comes to the pandemic. Our seven-day average has dropped to 136, and our positivity rate is now at 4.9%, just under the 5% mark that we've been working to meet. There were also no new deaths reported. Still, Mayor Nirenberg says there's been a slight rebound in the 14-day case curve towards the end of September. We also saw a slight rise in COVID-19 patients in the hospital. This morning, 219 are hospitalized. After testing positive for COVID-19 and being in a medically induced coma, a San Antonio nurse is finally back home with his family. Justin Vine was hospitalized on June 30th after testing positive for COVID-19. He was placed on a ventilator, given a plasma donation and remdesivir. After being in that medically induced coma for 56 days, Vine began to improve. Came out of the coma and went to rehab. Although he's back home, he is still using a walker and taking it one day at a time. I am on a couple of medications that hopefully I can wean off of pretty soon. I take a blood pressure medication. Um, I just take some for reflux. So, and uh, and something for pain when I have pain in my feet. It's because no one who's immune to this exposure, senators for getting it. President guy has it. His wife has it. And you, if you think if anybody wasn't going to get it, it would be them. Vine says he will continue to work on his walking and hopes to recover soon to get back to work as a pediatric nurse practitioner. In time now, it's 437 and 67 degrees for now. Still ahead on Good Morning San Antonio, trying to save a little cash by buying a used car. We'll tell you about some ways you can find a good deal. And caught on video, we're going to tell you more about the cause behind this car crash that involved six children. And outside with live cam, if you've been missing the really warm temperatures, Mike says, oh, I'll just wait a little bit longer. They're on the way back, at least temporarily. We'll get an update on his forecast coming up on your Tuesday morning. Glad you're starting your day with us here on KSAT. In your morning headlines, the Trump administration is looking at spending millions of dollars to paint part of the southern U.S. border wall black. That's according to U.S. Customs and Border Protection officials. CBP is overseeing border wall construction. A sectional wall that could get repainted stretches 82 miles in the Rio Grande Valley and Laredo. The agency says it could cost an extra $1 million per mile to paint it. But a black coating could have operational benefits like adding a contrast against the natural surroundings of the area. And remember that $1,200 stimulus check from the U.S. government you probably received months ago? Well, millions of people are still waiting to get theirs. At least that's what the Internal Revenue Service is reporting. The truth is no one really knows how many eligible people haven't received their money. That's because the IRS relies mostly on tax returns to process the payments, but you don't have to have, have filed one to be eligible. Some of the people in greatest need don't make enough money to file returns. The IRS created a special portal on its website for such people to register to receive their shares of the economic impact payment. It's been up since spring, and now the agency is extending the October 15th registration deadline to November 21st. A link to the non-filers tool is available on irs.gov. <laughs> Oh, 
Unbelievable video as a woman and her three kids crashed right through a house near New York City. You take a look at the video from the home security cameras that plow car plowing right through the home's kitchen. Police say the woman driving is now charged with DWI. Officers say her four, five and eight year old daughters were taken to a hospital out there near Long Island, but they are not hurt and they're now with their father. They were also three children living at the same address. Family members say everyone in the house, including the kids, are all okay. Blink of an eye. How scary. Could have changed everything. Yes. 443, 67 degrees. And still had many people drink occasionally to unwind, but health officials have noticed people are drinking a little more than usual during the pandemic, sometimes a lot more. We're going to show you how much alcohol sales have gone up. In the market for a used car, we'll tell you about some ways you can possibly save a little extra money. In this morning's GMA First Look, it's becoming one of the most popular pandemic purchases. We have people out on the street actually knocking on doors, buying cars and trucks. Demand skyrocketing for used cars. A Ford Mustang's average price up more than $2,500. A Jeep Wrangler up over $3,700. And a GMC Sierra truck increasing more than $4,900, all in just three months. And finding a great deal can be a bumpy ride. It's definitely overwhelming. You look and you search. So what's the key to navigating your purchase? First, don't be afraid of a high mileage car. Um, 100,000 miles today means virtually nothing. But that's not the only tip. Coming up at 7 a.m., we'll tell you everything you need to know about getting a used car you'll love without breaking the bank. With your GMA First Look, I'm Becky Worley, ABC News, Oakland, California. Alcohol sales are up thanks to stress brought on by the coronavirus. And while that may be a good thing for local businesses, it may not be such a good thing for your health. Our Max Massey explains why we're seeing an increase and what you can do to get help if you need it. Drinking alcohol to try to relax and de-stress is nothing new, but a new study in the Journal of American Medical Association shows Americans over 30 have been drinking even more than usual during this pandemic compared to last year. And health experts say that could lead to many unwanted consequences down the road. According to an article published by CNN, overall alcohol consumption increased by about 14% from 2019. That averages out to about one additional drinking day per month in about 75% of adults. Health experts say that excessive alcohol can lead to a weakened immune system and can even cause what's called acute respiratory distress syndrome. Experts are also worried about substance use disorder since more people are stressed these days. They say that with increased isolation at home, having to help with stay at home school, and other factors like the election and natural disasters, more people are likely to increase their drinking levels. Doctors say finding healthier ways to cope with stress, like exercising and finding a hobby, can help prevent substance use issues taking a hold of you. Maintaining a regular schedule and getting enough sleep can also help. If you need more help, physicians say even more assistance can be found through telehealth and virtual support groups. Experts even say reaching out to family and friends a great option. Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. 448, let's check traffic right now. And you said northbound 35 is currently closed, Nick? Yeah, Mark, still closed now. This is going towards San Marcos, so this is uh, very far up north there. Uh, looks like it's an 18-wheeler accident where fuel was leaked on the roadway. Every All traffic is being diverted to the access road right now. This is at Watson Lane there and IH35 North northbound. Keep that in mind if you're heading this direction. We have some trans guide footage of it. So there's that 18 wheeler there. It was actually reported on fire. It looks like that's not there anymore, but uh, right now it's still causing major traffic buildup on those main lanes. Just keep that in mind if you're going in that direction. Right, so 35 well outside the city. Yes, well outside. More, more close to San Marcos. Okay. Thanks, Nick. Thank you. And a beautiful glow behind you, Mike. Yeah, yesterday the sunrise was fantastic. It's going to be another beauty again today. One thing, though, uh, especially off to the east, we're dealing with a little bit in the way of some uh, uh, some fog and some a uh, couple of clouds hanging around here. Nothing is showing up in this picture as of right now, although this is looking uh, off to the uh, west time being. But there's the uh, visibility and drop down in Gonzales down to a quarter mile. Same thing, Victoria. LaGrange has improved ever so slightly. A hint of fog heading up in toward New Braunfels. But again, the most of it's going to be well off to the east. All right, dew point temperatures have definitely gone up. Just to compare, last week we were down in the 20s and 30s around here with that front that moved through that bone dry air. They've been slowly creeping up, still been comfortable, but now it's to the point where 
kind of like, okay, you sort of smell a little bit of humidity out there. We will keep some around this afternoon, even though we'll be at 60 or below and obviously drier out in the hill country, especially off to the east. You're going to be dealing with a, a hint of a heat index later on today, and then that's going to be the situation, especially going in toward the weekend. We'll have the afternoon dew points around the upper 50s. Not bad, but then all of a sudden they want to spike on Monday, but that's preceding uh, another front that's going to be working its way on through here to trim some of the humidity, but it will be warm and leaning toward the humid side as we go in toward the weekend. All right, tropics and we have uh, gamma and delta. Gamma is now considered post tropical system right there, right on the, the Yucatan. Not really that organized, but then look at delta there in the Caribbean and this thing is growing by leaps and bounds. It is now jumped up to a category two hurricane as of right now. It's going to be working its way and as it crosses from the Caribbean into the Gulf, becoming a category four storm into the Gulf of Mexico. It should weaken a little bit, but still it's going to be considered a major hurricane and it's working its way sort of in our direction, although forecast still has it to make that right hand turn in toward Louisiana. And it does look like it's going to be making landfall as either a really strong category two or category three storm. That's going to be sometime looks like late Friday into Saturday. And with that right hand turn, yes, it does avoid us. There's a little bit of um, some thinking, depending on the computer model, that there could be a couple of wraparound showers in our extreme eastern counties from this. And obviously, it nudges a little bit further to the northwest. We might see a couple more showers in some of our eastern counties, but there could be a few of them. Obviously, some clouds, uh, more rain the further east you go, and that's going to be heading in uh, toward the weekend. Otherwise, around the country, there's still nothing going on out there, and that's what's in store for us. As far as the forecast today, we are going to be up to 80 today at noon, and then a high temperature about mm, almost 5 degrees above normal, up to 89, and also there's an uh, ozone action day in effect around the uh, metropolitan area, so if you can put off, uh, maybe fill up the tank, that would help out until later on this evening. Temperatures remain close to 90 the next few days. Low temperatures are going to be hanging around mid-60s. 63 is the normal low, so we're in the ballpark for the next couple of days, but then it really starts to warm up and really starts to heat up by the weekend. Again, maybe a couple of uh, showers around here on Friday, potentially, uh, especially in our eastern counties, and then very hot this weekend. Uh, that's looking awfully normal around <laughs> here. Yeah, and, and awfully 10 degrees above normal for the weekend. Yeah, gosh, what happened to fall? We just got into fall. We got a little taste of fall. Mother Nature was just teasing us. Yeah. How long have you lived here? <laughs> <laughs> a long time, I know. It's, it's temporary. It's, it'll be back. I'm fooling myself for my own mental health. Mm. That's true. You know how it goes. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> thanks, guys. 453, 67 degrees. And coming up next, the leader of the cinema world is defending the decision to close Regal Movie Theater in the U.S. And right now we have a scheduled EAS test. The head of Cineworld defending the decision to close movie theaters in the U.S. and U.K., CEO Mookie Gradinger says without blockbuster Hollywood movies to show, he had no choice. We were uh, bleeding much bigger amounts when we are open than when we are closed because uh, we'll be like a, a grocery shop with no food. We had to take this. We had to take this decision. The move comes after the upcoming James Bond film No Time to Die was moved from November to April of next year. Cineworld owns Regal Cinemas in the U.S., the second largest chain. Theaters will shut down this week with no planned date to reopen.
also shutting down the critically acclaimed Netflix series Glow. The streaming service says because of complications due to COVID-19, it won't be possible to go ahead with season four. An impressive new chart record set by Travis Scott. His new song, Franchise, just debuted at number one on the Billboard Hot 100 singles chart. Scott's third number one debut in less than a year, which has never been done before in the history of the Hot 100. Closest was Ariana Grande, who did it in 16 months. Scott did it in just nine. And happy birthday, Elizabeth Shue. The Oscar-nominated actress is 57 today, while actor Jeremy Sisko is 46. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathans and ABC News. Los Angeles. You know. We're approaching one minute till five. It's uh, 67 degrees. And still head on GMSA. What's next for President Donald Trump now that he's back at the White House recovering from the coronavirus? Plus, looking to beat the crowd this holiday season, we'll check out how retailers are kicking off the shopping season earlier than ever this year. Live from Chase at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Making news overnight, a woman in police custody following a chase on San Antonio's north side. Plus, medical professionals react to President Donald Trump's release from the hospital after contracting COVID-19. And Mike says above normal temperatures on the way in the next few days. We'll get an update. Good morning to you. It is Tuesday, October 6th. Thanks for joining us this morning. And I think you said it best earlier when you said Mother Nature was just teasing us with the nice fall weather that we had. That yeah, little taste <laughs> of fall is gone for now, but it will return. Right. And looks wise, I mean, gorgeous. Unfortunately, you know, no rain uh, in in the forecast around here, but temperatures now it's still pleasant this morning. We're at 67 degrees still though about four above normal. I think we may drop down another couple of notches, although that dew point has gone up just in the past half hour. It's up to 64 right now. We will make it up to 89 degrees later on this afternoon. The normal high temperature is right around the mid 80s. So we're almost five degrees above normal, and that's going to be the trend. And then some as we head into the rest of the week and going into the weekend aquifer down three tenths of a foot in the past 24 hours and the allergy a lot of ragweed out there right now. Mold is on the low side, so the humidity is trying to come back in here and that's causing a little bit of fog. Now there's nothing really showing up around the metropolitan area. A hint of it there in Pleasanton, seven miles visibility. You're going to have to be on the lookout for that up around New Braunfels as well. Maybe at Randolph. That's where some of the uh, fog usually shows up first of all, but notice that batch off to the east and that's around Gonzalez quarter mile visibility. Victoria's actually improved ever so slightly and a hint of fog around the range. So just watch it off to the east, especially over the next couple of hours, because usually it does thicken up just about the time when the sun is thinking about coming up. So we're looking at about 7, 730. Right after that, we we'll, may see some of the thickest fog. Also, ozone action day is in effect today for the uh, metropolitan area. Couple of clouds, some of that fog off to the east this morning and then sunny, warm upper 80s today like yesterday. And it's going to get even hotter as we go in toward the weekend. Definitely warming up and a hot weekend right now or today about five degrees above normal. We're looking at about 10 degrees above normal by the weekend. The latest on the tropics coming up. Time saver traffic right now. Here is Officer Nick Solis. Thanks, Mike. Okay, right now things look good in the city. A lot of greens there on the screen, but we're dealing with this accident here. It's going to be northbound I-35 at Watson Lane. Look at this heavy traffic buildup right at Watson Lane. The main lanes of 35 are closed down and all traffic is being diverted to the frontage road right now. Now this is going towards San Marcos, closer to San Marcos and 1604 over there. So just keep that in mind if you are heading in this direction. All right, his construction to I-10 and Bernie Stage Road. This is the eastbound lanes there. Should be cleared up by around 637. Mark, Stephanie, back to you. Thank you, Nick. A suspected drug trafficking situation turned into a car chase in Castle Hills early this morning. The driver has been arrested after police say they found meth in her car. Our Sarah Costa is live on the north side where that chase ended. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning, and that chase ended in the parking lot right behind me at Bassey and West Avenue, but it didn't start here. It started in Castle Hills, where police say they've been watching a residential area after an alleged suspected drug trafficking situation. Police say they've been watching the residential area on Jackson Keller for a few days now. A woman left the residence this morning and noticed officers watching her. Police ran the plates of her vehicle and realized it was stolen. When Castle Hills police attempted to pull her over, she led them on a chase down to McCullough, where police say she almost wrecked out at the baseball fields on McCullough and Bassey. She kept driving on Bassey until her tires shredded. 
on West Avenue when she was detained in the parking lot. Officers say they found meth all over the inside of her vehicle and that the woman admitted to go into the residence on Jackson Keller to buy drugs. Police did not say what charges she will be facing and they say they'll continue to investigate that residence in Castle Hills. Reporting live from the north side, I'm Sarah Acosta, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Stephanie. President Trump back at the White House this morning after receiving treatment for his coronavirus infection at the Walter Reed National Military Medical Center. CNN's Karen Kaifa is in Maryland with the latest. President Trump walking out the front doors of Walter Reed, giving a fist pump, then a thumbs up. Thank you very much. Thank you. No longer a patient at the hospital, when reaching the entrance to the White House, the president took off his mask. Though he may not entirely be out of the woods yet, the team and I agree that all our evaluations, and most importantly, his clinical status, support the president's safe return home. Temporary offices are being set up for the president to work near the White House medical unit. He's returning to a facility, the White House medical unit, that's staffed 24-7, top-notch. Infectious disease experts say the president's discharge comes a bit too soon. It does seem to be um, just a little bit uh, accelerated. The general guidelines are when is it safe for a person to go out from the time they get symptoms is probably around 10 days from the onset of symptoms. The president now facing heat for I learned so much about coronavirus and one thing that's for certain, don't let it dominate you. Don't be afraid of it. I think it's totally inappropriate. Now that he's busy tweeting campaign messages, I would ask him to do this. Listen to the scientists. Support masks. Now, looking forward to October 15th, the next presidential debate. The Trump campaign says it is the president's intention to debate. I to say that it's safe. At Walter Reed National Military Medical Center in Bethesda, Maryland, I'm Karen Kafa reporting. Back here at home, a San Antonio police officer is lucky to be alive after he was shot in the chest by a suspect during a traffic stop. It happened around 6.30 last night near Southwest Military and Logwood Avenue. Chief William McManus said the officer was doing a traffic stop when one of the passengers wanted on a charge, got out and started to run. The officer chased him, but at that point, suspect turned around and shot multiple rounds at the officer. One of the bullets hit the officer directly in his body camera and did not penetrate his chest. That officer returned fire, hit the suspect in the stomach and arm. The suspect was taken to the hospital. His condition is unknown right now. The driver and other passenger were detained for questioning. And tonight at 6 p.m., Family Service is hosting a National Night Out drive through event. It will feature free hygiene items, school supplies, food, and family activity kits for about 300 cars. Now, this is happening at Family Service's West Side Community Center, the neighborhood place. Due to COVID, this typically in-person event was changed to a drive through Now, it's happening once again at the neighborhood place located at 3014 Rivas Street starting tonight at 6 p.m. We hope you guys have a great evening. Right now it's 5.08 in the morning, 67 degrees. And still ahead, a look at why retailers are kicking off the holiday shopping season earlier than ever this year. And next, we take a trip to Mexico to gain a deeper understanding of Dia de los Muertos. And taking a look out with live cam, it is pleasant for now, a nice 67 degrees, but things are gonna warm up a little bit where I'm talking more about the weekend. I'll let Mike explain all of that to you after the break. Welcome back, good morning 512. We are a few weeks away from Dia de los Muertos, a Mexican celebration also celebrated big time right here in San Antonio. That's right, and at the beginning of the year and before the pandemic took hold in the U.S., our Isis Romero traveled to Mexico along with KSET journalist RJ Marquez and Misael Gomez to gain a deeper understanding about the holiday. Here's some of the stories you'll see from our team in the coming weeks. From the historic boroughs of Mexico City to the bright and colorful alleys of Guanajuato. Symbols of Day of the Dead are found in many places in Mexico 
throughout the year. Today we are in Cerro Pelón, which is in the southern side of the reserve, where there's a lot of butterfly activity this time of year. The monarch butterflies found deep within the forests outside of Mexico City are just one of many examples. Each butterfly believed to hold the spirit of a lost loved one. The day of the dead, that's when local people just start to see butterflies here. And of course, icons of the past are still very much present in Mexican culture. People from all over the world um, coming to visit not only Frida's house, but uh, just Coyoacan in general. I could understand why it has such an impact on Day of the Dead for us, and we see all the influence that she has from here all the way up to San Antonio. As we move about different cities and the countryside, we also take a moment to enjoy the flavors of this rich and vibrant country, which can be experienced in more ways than one. Just walking by in Guanajuato and found this bakery, and man. They're so warm that they're actually melting in my hand. No offense to our uh, panaderias back home, but this is really good. Whether it's in a panteón or in a museum, the cultural significance of Dia de Muertos is on full display as we journey into Mexico to explore the beauty and traditions of Day of the Dead. RJ's Bakery bias was showing. <laughs> Just a Tem little bit. Te temporary. Yeah, he was being truthful. Of course. <laughs> and mark your calendars for Friday, October 30th. KSET will be presenting a special two-hour Day of the Dead virtual event. It'll be from 8 to 10 p.m. Again, that's on Friday, October 30th, the day before Halloween. Hope to see you then. Right now, it is exactly 515, 67 degrees. And still ahead, a look at how Instagram is celebrating its 10th birthday. Migraine strikes. There's quick dissolve Nurtec. Don't take if allergic to Nurtec. Side effects include nausea. To pay as little as zero dollars, go to Nurtec.com. Every customer has their own Safe Light story. This couple was on a camping trip when their windshield got a chip. They drove to Safe Light for a same day repair. And with their insurance, it was no cost to them. Really? That's service you can trust. Safe Light Repair, Safe Light Replace. In today's Tech Bytes, Apple preparing to launch new audio products. The company has removed headphones and wireless speakers from several of its rivals, including Sonos and Bose. From its website and stores, Apple is expected to launch its own headphones and a new smart speaker soon. Christmas is coming early, very early this year for retailers. Best Buy, Macy's, and Target are starting their traditional Black Friday sales this month. And to prepare for the online rush, even jewelry stores are boosting warehouse staff to handle deliveries. Finally, happy 10th. 10th birthday Instagram, the photo sharing app, is marking its first decade with new features meant to encourage kindness. Among them, new warnings that tell users their accounts can be disabled if they break the rules and repeatedly post mean comments. So watch what you post because you don't want to get blocked. Those are your Tech Bites. Have a great day. We need to check on traffic right now at 519. How's it looking, Nick Salise? Well, right now, Steph, things are looking good all in the city. A lot of green there on the screen, a little bit of construction, but 35 North still blocked off right now due to this accident here on Watson Lane with that 18 wheeler. Looks like there was fuel on the road. All traffic is being diverted to the frontage road right now. And here it is there. So look, that's a King Kong record right now trying to get that 18 wheeler there and towed out of the roadway. There's the access road traffic going very slow right now, but this is uh, still very active and expected delay. And this is closer to San Marcos. So if you have to go 35 North, definitely expect a little bit of a delay on your way to work. All right, beautiful. I mean, sunrise and sunsets the past couple of days have just been spectacular. And Mr. Childers, one of our regulars, captured this uh, KSAC Connect picture. That's absolutely gorgeous. And now we're looking off to the northwest right now with this camera, but we're going to be uh, swinging it around and probably about, oh, uh, not for another 
um, hour and a half or so, we won't see any glow just before uh, 7 o'clock. We'll start to see the glow of the sunrise this morning. As far as any fog, there's now a little bit more around Pleasanton. It's dropped to 5 miles visibility. Gonzales still at a half mile. Victoria is just down to 1 mile visibility. Not a lot in the metropolitan area as of right now. Just again, watch if you're going down 37 and toward Pleasanton. All right, high temperatures yesterday got up to 89 degrees. So a lot of mid upper 80s, 90s about five degrees above normal, and that's going to be the situation again today. We are looking at upper 80s throughout much of the area, and this is the trend all week long and actually getting warmer as we go into the rest of the week. Now, we do have a little bit extra moisture down here at the surface. That's what's helping with some of the fog off to the east, but then you go upstairs in the atmosphere, and this kind of brownish shade in the uh, water vapor imagery, that means it's just bone dry upstairs, and that's why if you do have any fog this morning or any clouds after those get out and out of here we're going to have just nothing but beautiful blue skies all day long so it's going to be just another prize winner all right here is the latest on what is now become and it's growing very quickly hurricane delta it's a category two right now and then by Sometime late tonight, tomorrow morning, it is forecast to not only become category three throughout the day today, but also a category four storm. So a very powerful major storm as it cuts across the tip of the Yucatan Peninsula out into the Gulf of Mexico. Still a major hurricane as we go into Thursday and then it starts to make that turn and it's going to be kind of a strong three or a week four. I mean, still a very powerful storm as it goes in the latter part of the week, and it is still forecast to make that right hand turn in toward Louisiana and making landfall probably as a major hurricane as a category three storm. Now with this position, it could actually throw a couple of showers in our direction in some of our eastern counties here in town. For most of us, we're not going to see anything, perhaps a couple of extra clouds, and that would be well off to the east. But again, there could be a little bit of rain off to the east with that uh, storm as it continues to work its way up in toward Louisiana. But obviously things can change, so we definitely have to keep tabs on that storm as it uh, continues to work its way into the Gulf of Mexico. 80 at noon today, sunny sky, good looking day. It's definitely going to be on the warm side, though. We're making it in the upper 80s, a lot of low 90s around here. Not humid, but not dry. So I mean, enough humidity out there to where if you're, say, cutting the grass today, you ain't going to notice it. There is an ozone action day in effect as well today. Tomorrow, uh, 89 degrees again. We start off mid 60s, closer to normal in the low end of things, and then temperatures continue to warm up. I mean, we're looking at uh, 10 degrees above normal by the weekend. Even the low temperatures are going to be anywhere from 5 to 10 degrees above normal. But a front should move through here sometime during the day on Monday to kind of trim things off a little bit. Monday. So even a few degrees will help in the afternoon. Right. Get back to that summer thinking. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, <laughs> Mike, I know you're not looking forward to that. You, you prefer the fall. Yes, as, I do. As do I. Especially yes. once you've had that little taste of it. Yeah, I know. You want more. We do. So 523, 67 degrees. And coming up next in your morning spot lot, Ryan Reynolds is back in the movie Free Guy. Plus, Carrie Underwood is getting a jump start on putting out a holiday album. We're getting a first look at Ryan Reynolds' Ryan Reynolds's new movie. Uh huh. Plus, at least one musical artist already topping the holiday charts. CNN's David Daniel has more movie and music news in today's Hollywood Minute. Guys, I have to tell you something. There is no easy way to say this. This world, it's a video game. I really want to kiss you. Is that weird? Listen to me. You're not real. Wait, you let who kiss you? Guy. There's not a button for that. Oh, he found the button. Here's your latest look at Free Guy. Ryan Reynolds plays a non-player character in an open-world style video game who falls for a player, Jodie Comer from Killing Eve, and decides to defy his programming and become a hero. Free Guy is currently set to debut in theaters December 11th. It was a fire eight miles away throwing up a column full of embers and the ash. Darkest, blackest, calm smoke I've ever seen. And then a 40 mile an hour wind. Ron Howard's documentary Rebuilding Paradise looks at 2018's Camp Fire, the deadliest, most destructive wildfire in California history. October is Fire Prevention Month, and National Geographic Documentaries is donating a portion of all sales and rentals of the film this month to area fire recovery efforts.
You may not even have your Halloween decorations out yet, but Billboard's top holiday albums chart is back, and Carrie Underwood's first Christmas album, My Gift, leads the way. It's also the year's first holiday album to debut on the overall Billboard 200 chart, starting out at number eight. Waiting for snow in Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. 528, 67 degrees. And still ahead, President Donald Trump is telling Americans they should not fear COVID-19, but some health officials caution that complacency could be dangerous. What a burger, the latest chain to put out a new spicy chicken sandwich. And good morning, it's Tuesday, October 6th. Thanks for being with us this morning. Hope you had a good week so far, right? It's Tuesday. Yeah, not bad. <laughs> Welcome back. Thank uh, you. It was your daughter's ye birthday yesterday. You guys had a good time. Yes, thank you so much. Uh, her request was to wake up to presents, uh -huh. you know, and so here's mommy wrapping early in the morning and she and got you her made wish. It happen. Yes, How I old did. is she now? Seven. Seven years old. Win by fast. I want to wake up the presents. <laughs> I know, right? You want them right there on the table as you're having your morning coffee, right? No, put them over there tomorrow really? morning. Will you please? Uh, maybe, <laughs> uh, maybe next August, Mike. Yes. You have to remind me, though. How about next Thursday? <laughs> uh, anyway. Just because. <laughs> you know, it'd be nice present is uh, some rain and a good cold front around here. Yeah. I, we may have to wait till night. No, I don't want to say wait till next August for that. But uh, we don't really have anything decent in the forecast, especially as far as rain is concerned. 65 degrees here in town, so we did drop down a couple of notches. Dew point is uh, kind of on the verge of where you sort of, kind of, sort of notice that it is on the, the humid side when you uh, you step outside. Now, with the extra humidity, especially off to the east, we are starting to see a little bit of fog. Not much at all around the metropolitan area. Some a hint of it there going down 37 toward Pleasanton, but then you get off in toward Gonzales, a lot of fog, Victoria as well. LaGrange has improved ever so slightly, so we're going to obviously keep tabs on this and just be on the lookout for that over the next couple of hours, especially as we get a little closer toward sunrise in 7 o'clock, 7.30-ish, in toward 8 o'clock when a lot of times the fog does get thicker. Ragweed's on the high side, mold is low. We do have an ozone action day in effect today, and as far as uh, temperatures today, it's going to be another hot one like yesterday. We're going to make it up to 89 degrees, about five above normal. That's going to be the trend throughout the rest of the week. Above normal temperatures and matter of fact, continue going up. And we're looking at uh, almost like a little taste of summer by the weekend. Details in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. Here is Officer Nick Salee. Still got that big problem out there, Nick? Still got the big problem on 35, but other than that, things in the city are looking good. Construction on 36 and 90 has cleared up, so that's one out of the way there. We still have this major accident, though. Northbound IH 35 North at Watson Lane. Their traffic is now heavy moderate to heavy wrecker is still working on getting the, the 18 wheeler off the roadway. Hopefully they can get this cleared up soon, but for now you're going to have to divert to the access road there to continue northbound 35 towards San Marcos. All right, here we go. This is 10 at Bernie stage here. This construction's on those eastbound lanes. Hopefully this gets cleared up soon, but just keep that in mind. If you're heading this direction, you're still going to run in to some construction. Mark Stephanie, back to you. Thank you very much, Nick. Call it the new normal, but the coronavirus pandemic has dominated 2020. And as CNN's John Lawrence reports, health experts say to expect that to continue into 2021. President Trump taking to Twitter after his three-day hospitalization for COVID-19, telling the U.S. to not be afraid of the virus. But some medical experts urging more caution. It is a contagious, deadly disease. We will get through it. But we have to 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 treat it with with, uh, you know, the fear that it deserves so that we don't inadvertently uh, get too many people infected. An updated influential coronavirus model now predicts COVID-19 could kill more than 2,900 people daily by late December. We're starting to see the Midwest and the Northwest an uptick in test positivity, which tends to be a predictor that you're going to have surges. Some of those surges could come from complacency. I do think there's fatigue. I think it's been a long six months. We haven't uh, beat this disease yet. Um, there isn't herd immunity. We need to be vigilant through the rest of this fall, winter, and probably next spring until there's uh, a vaccine. A study from Massachusetts General Hospital found that easing pandemic social distancing measures immediately erased public health gains against the coronavirus. Some people in this country are gonna be able to have a relatively normal 
type of a Thanksgiving. But in other areas of the country, it's going to be you better make hold off and maybe just have immediate family. I'm John Lawrence reporting. And it looks like fewer Americans are willing to try a COVID-19 vaccine. According to a new CNN poll, a little more than half of Americans say they would try to get vaccinated. The poll surveyed more than 1,200 adults on the phone. 51% of them said that they would go for a vaccine if it was widely available at a low cost. That's a huge drop from the 66% of the people who said the same thing back in May. A Northeast Texas police officer has been arrested for the alleged murder of 30, a 31 year old man. Authorities say the incident happened Saturday northeast of Tallis in the tiny town of Wolf City. Wolf City police officer Sean Lucas, who you see right here, responding to a call about a possible fight. According to DPS, he tried to detain a man identified as Jonathan Price when Price resisted and began walking away. DPS says Lucas first used his taser, then shot Price. Price was taken to a hospital where he later died. Authorities say a preliminary investigation found that Lucas's actions were not objectionably reasonable. He has been arrested and charged with murder. An exceptionally rare 102 carat diamond has made auction history. It's the first gem of its quality to be sold without a reserve. That means that it would have been sold regardless of the size of the highest bid. The flawless diamond sold for $15.7 million yesterday. It was cut from a rough diamond discovered in Ontario, Canada in 2018. Now it achieved top rankings in each of the four C's, cut color, clarity, and carat weight. It has the highest grading for a white diamond classified as D color. Right now it's 537, 65 degrees. And still ahead, if you need a break, why not play some Super Mario? We're going to tell you about the newest game in the franchise that comes with a little nostalgia. And whether they're in class or learning from home, students of all ages finding it harder to focus. Up next, we'll look at some easy ways to get them back on track. And taking a look out with live cam, it is a pleasant 65 degrees right now. We will enjoy that because things will warm up just a little bit this afternoon. We're going to check in with Mike in just a bit. These days, kids have masks and social distancing to contend with at school, or many of them spend hours staring at a screen while virtual learning from home. So it's no wonder why some kids may get distracted. But as CNN's Mandy Gaither reports, there are ways to help keep them focused. Whether kids are learning from home or back in the classroom, it's not a normal school year. If your student is distracted, help them by keeping a routine. Go to bed at the same time each night and, if they're virtual learning, plan meal times and brain breaks and help them establish organization skills. Helping your kids find ways to know what's coming so that they can expect what's happening and know what's going on in their day is really helpful. Dr. Stephanie Walsh, medical director of child wellness at Children's Healthcare of Atlanta says, talking to your kids about how things are going with school can help clear their heads and fuel their focus. If they're home, make sure you think about where your child is learning. So are they sitting in the same space? Are they sitting in the same room that they watch television in? Because that can also be pretty distracting. And finally, make time for fun something kids can look forward to. We talk a lot about how contagious COVID is, but remember that laughter is also pretty contagious. So if you can start finding the humor in things, finding the kindness in different aspects and practicing some gratitude, that'll really help your kids stay focused on, on what's going on and, and schoolwork. For Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. Yeah, if you'd asked many parents a year ago that they'd uh, take a dip into the homeschooling pool. Oh, my goodness. I mean, would you have even thought what no, this would have been like? No, I would never even have believed that I would be doing what I'm mm -hmm. doing right now. Yep. Yeah, it's very interesting. It's a full-time job on top of a full-time job. Yeah, yes, it is. Um, it, yeah, some, some students are better, but I have to admit, my little one, I have to, like, redirect. Focus, focus, focus sure. again. So, well, some of us have to do that. 542, 65 degrees. And coming up next, we're going to tell you how Lowe's is offering a trick-or-treating alternative for Halloween. And welcome back. It's 545. In your morning consumer headlines, Halloween is likely going to look very different this year for kids all over the country. And Lowe's Home Improvement Warehouse stores will be offering drive through curbside trick-or-treating. It works like this. Families register in advance on Lowe's.com slash DIY to reserve a spot. Then on either October 22nd or the 29th, they can drive up to the store for a free candy and a small pumpkin. Costumes are encouraged, but not required.
Many of you have already tried it, but Whataburger is getting in the spiky, spicy chicken game. The San Antonio-based fast food chain now selling its own spicy chicken sandwich. It's a marinated fried chicken filet with lettuce, tomatoes, pickles, and mayo on a toasted bun. Whataburger says the new offering is now being served at all locations in-store, curbside, or for delivery. And I've heard early reviews mm -hmm. are good. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. I think this time I'm going to try it. A lot of the other ones I haven't, I was like, yeah. And then I was mm -hmm. pleasantly surprised recently by one of them, so I'll, I'll try Whataburger as well. We like spicy, right? Yes, we do. Sure. All the time. <laughs> Spice of life. If you're looking for a family-friendly video game to play with the family, Nintendo has you covered. <laughs> Let's make sure it's okay for the family. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and Max Massey has a preview of Super Mario Brothers 35 and how you can get it for free. Super Mario has been a staple in video game world since the original Super Mario Bros. released back in 1985 for the Nintendo Entertainment System. But now, Nintendo is bringing those fond memories back with a twist. The company's latest Mario entry, Super Mario Bros. 35, pits you against 34 other Marios in a sort of battle royale type setting. You can still do the typical Mario type stuff, jump, collect coins, get power-ups, but the ultimate goal is going to be the last plumber standing. Nintendo says it's counting on the nostalgia of the Mario brand and combining it with the modern online multiplayer battle experience. Since we live in an age of video games where titles like Fortnite are the most popular, but you only have a limited time if you want to buy in. This Nintendo Switch title is available from October 1st until March 31st as a free download for Nintendo Online subscribers. After that, it's no longer going to be available to play. That means you're going to have to pay $4 a month to play. There's also an option to pay $20 for a whole year. This is not the first time Nintendo has tried this. Last year, it launched Tetris 99 as a competitive online game where the last player standing wins. Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. Some folks have to head out the door and hit the roads at 548. Yes, there's one big accident northbound 35. How's that looking now, Officer Nick Solis? Still active, Steph, right now. So that they're still trying to get that 18-wheeler off the roadway here. This is the accident Steph's talking about. So this is a major accident northbound IH-35 at Watson Lane. This is going towards San Marcos, uh, closer to San Marcos than coming back to 1604. Now, this uh, was involved in 18 wheeler where there was fuel leaked on the road and it's been there for about two hours now. So hopefully they can get it cleared up soon. I got trans guide footage, but first I want to show you some drive times. Eastbound 151, 1604 to 99 minutes. And if you're 90 eastbound 1604 to 35, 10 minutes, so still looking really good there. Okay, here's that accident, I-35 at Watson Lane. We still have a tow truck trying to get this 18-wheeler out of the roadway. You can see the frontage road there where everyone is diverting is starting to pick up uh, very, very heavy traffic, very moderate to heavy traffic. So just keep that in mind if you're heading in that direction towards Austin. All right, so if you're sailing out of town, everything looks great, all of a sudden things are going to come to a <laughs> screeching halt there. It's going to hit you right there before the outlets. Okay, before right. the outlet mall. Got it. Thank you, Nick. And a beautiful picture behind you, Mike. Yeah, uh, Mr. Olson always takes these great bird pictures and uh, an immature male ruby-throated hummingbird. So, of course, I've seen a lot of hummingbirds hanging around this one uh, bush in my backyard mm -hmm. as well lately, which is kind of unusual. They will soon migrate down to areas in um, northern South America. Oh, okay. The immature male ruby-throated. Yes. Yeah, so he's what? He's not been doing his chores. <laughs> Doesn't, doesn't listen to his parents. Answering back. Oh, yeah, that, just How no, trouble. great picture. Thank you very much for that. We're not seeing, obviously, any glow of the uh, early sunrise yet. Visibility, five miles pleasant in Gonzales has really uh, jumped up now. Visibility, five miles and still some thick fog around Victoria. But we're going to have to watch out in our eastern and southeastern counties for some uh, fog over the next couple of hours because we do have a little bit of extra humidity out there. Dew point temperatures. Randolph is at uh, 68. So that's a bunch of humidity that's showing up. Port SA uh, 63, 62 at the airport, just enough to where you kind of notice it. It's not as though you sweat when you walk outside, but now obviously hill country is much more pleasant, but it's just kind of like, okay, it's not as cool and crisp as what it was. And we are going to be keeping these afternoon dew points well up into the upper 50s, flirting around 60 kind of sort of feeling it and then they are going to start to go up especially going into money but right after that after we uh, get that extra kind of surge of humidity coming on in here we should see a front move on through and that will kind of clean things out of here for a while at least some of the humidity and some of the higher temperatures because temperatures are definitely going to be peaking as we go in toward the weekend so here's what's going on high pressure still kind of controlling things still a bit of this northwesterly flow that's what we had obviously last week that brought in the cooler air 
and what we're going to be watching is the high, which mm, sort of dominates things. But then also here comes the uh, the hurricane moving on in, and this is still forecast. Now it is gaining strength. Hurricane Delta. It is now a category two storm. It's going to be jumping up category three, category four storm by tomorrow, working its way into the Gulf and then making landfall in Louisiana. It could actually throw a couple of showers back in our eastern counties by Friday. It's a possibility, just something to keep in mind, and that will move off into the uh, Mid-South and the uh, Tennessee Valley. Another trough's going to be digging here, but this one's going to be a little too far to the north to really give us any good benefit as far as any rain, but it will pull a front through here on Monday. So again, that should at least trim temperatures because they're going to be really, really hot over the weekend. 80 today at noon, sunny skies and a high temperature today. It's going to be pretty warm out there, 89 and just enough humidity to kind of feel it. Ozone Action Day is in effect as well today, so if you can put off filling up the tank till later on, that would help out. And then tomorrow, Thursday, about the same situation. Um, Friday as the storm, whoops, jump past that, well, pretty picture there. <laughs> yes, jump past that seven that. days, sorry about that. Uh, maybe a couple of showers well off to the east on Friday, and then temperatures over the weekend are going to be getting up into the mid-90s and that front on Monday. You know, you're going to have a stern talking to with that immature <laughs> hummingbird. Get it off back on the yes. right track. Will it listen, though? No. Yeah, probably will. It's, <laughs> it's Uncle Mike, after all. It'll be on its phone. Right. <laughs> 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 Ignoring you. What did you, what did you <laughs> say? Huh? 552, Ooh, 66 degrees. And Zack Snyder's 300 gets a special video release this week, as does a new entry in the American Pie franchise. We're going to have a preview just ahead. Here are your lottery numbers. Pick 3, 899, Fireball 6, Daily 4, 9656, Fireball 0. Cash 5, 346, 2123. And your Texas 2-step, 4, 9, 19, 21, Bonus Ball 1. Madness. It's the story of an orphan girl. It was sent to live in a mysterious house. The Secret Garden arrives on physical home video after its digital release in August. Based on the Francis Hodgson Burnett novel, the film stars Colin Firth and Julie Walters. Rule one, fix our romantic lives. Rule number two, we support our fellow women. Depending on how you're counting, American Pie Presents Girls Rules is the ninth movie in the American Pie franchise overall, or the fifth in the American Pie Presents spinoff series. Either way, it's a high school sex comedy, but from the girls' point of view. Preferring key lime to warm apple pie in Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. Bear County two, Precinct 2 Commissioner Justin Rodriguez has partnered with KSAC Community Partner University Health to host a flu shot drive. It'll be this Saturday, the October 10th from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. at Nelson Wolf Stadium. Those who show up can get a flu shot while never having to leave their vehicle. For information on how and where to register for the event, head to ksaccommunity.com. Right now it is 5.57. Nice cup of coffee could be the best thing in the morning after a rough night's sleep, but can it cause problems if you drink it at the wrong time? Just ahead on the morning show, we'll tell you when is the best time to have that first cup of joe. And an update on the traffic situation heading out of San Antonio, northbound 35 up towards the outlet malls in San Marcos. We've had a closure all morning long so far. We'll get the very latest from Officer Solis. A woman has been arrested after she led Castle Hills PD on a chase and they found meth inside her car. Good morning, I'm Sarah Acosta. In just a bit, we'll tell you how Castle Hills police say this all started. Loop 410 on the south side back open after a motorcycle crash closed down the highway overnight. And right now we know that one of the motorcycle riders has died. And taking a look out with live cam this morning, a nice 66 degrees. We'll take it right now. Things are going to warm up a little bit. We're going to check in with Mike right now. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. And a good morning to you. It is Tuesday. It is October 6th. Welcome back. Stephanie Cernit took the day off yesterday to celebrate her daughter's seventh birthday. Thank you. Good morning. You guys had a good day? We did. It was, it was a nice day. And in between her Zoom meetings, we right. went outside to enjoy the weather. And then it was 
started getting a little warm. <laughs> yeah, it's pleasant till about lunchtime, and then yeah. things really start to warm up. Of course, weather affects all of us, and we always like to lead things off with meteorologist Mike Ostrage. Good morning, Mike. Good morning. Uh, it's going to be the same situation again today. If you want to, you know, get outside, maybe do it earlier on in the day because by the afternoon it will be pushing at 90 degrees, upper 80s in a lot of spots, and uh, some spots in the low 90s. That's going to be the situation all week long, and then some or at least temperatures and then some getting into the weekend. First of all, we got to deal with some uh, fog and now all of a sudden Randolph is dealing with a two and three quarter mile visibility that dropped down just in the past a uh, couple of minutes uh, as far as that fog goes. So just watch it over there on the east side of town and some of that may tended to drift a little bit, uh, perhaps in towards Stinson. Usually it's a little bit of fog there as well. Pleasanton has some. Gonzalez has now dropped to uh, three miles two at Victoria and uh, Ragweed, that's something that a lot of folks are dealing with as of right now. It is definitely on the high side. We also have an ozone action day in effect today. As far as temperatures, we may drop another degree or two. The normal low is 63, so we're in the ballpark of that. But you step outside, it's like mm, sort of feel a bit of humidity, kind of smell the humidity ever so slightly. We'll be up to 80 today at noon, and it's not going to be like you know, steam bath kind of humidity, but kind of kind of sort of notice it and we'll be up to uh, 89 later on today and temperatures are going to continue to go up throughout the rest of the week and then especially in toward the weekend. It's going to be a hot weekend. Details on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now and officer Nick Solis, you've been talking about a couple of doozy accidents out there all morning. Yeah, 18 wheeler on 35 Mike and now we just had this one pop up. I don't know. I've got to get more information. This is going to be the 35 either south and northbound there uh, at Randall. Off, uh, so I'll get you more information when I can on that accident. But this is what Mike was talking about here. Major accident northbound IH 35 at Watson Lane. This is right before the outlet malls there north on 35 going towards San Marcos. Look at this traffic. It is a uh, very, very heavy traffic right now. But from trans guide footage that I have, it looks like they have opened up one lane. So this was completely closed down and it looks like they have opened up the left lane there of those northbound IH 35 lanes. But as you can see here, the King Kong wrecker is still there trying to get this 18 wheeler off the roadway and it leaked fuel so it's caused quite a mess there on those northbound 35 lanes other than that please get to work safely wear your seatbelt and go the, st the speed limit stephanie thank you nick a woman leading castle hills police on a chase through the north side of the city early this morning and it ended with police finding meth in her car our sarah costa is live on bassey and west avenue where that chase ended and sarah how did it all start Good morning, Stephanie. Castle Hills police say that it started by watching an area near Jackson Keller where they had gotten a couple of calls about an alleged suspected drug trafficking situation. A woman who was leaving that residential area got into her car and noticed police watching her. Police ran the plates of her vehicle and realized it was stolen. When police attempted to pull her over, she led them on a chase down to McCullough where police say she almost wrecked out her car at the baseball fields on McCullough and Bassey. Police say she kept driving on Bassey until her tire shredded on West Avenue and she was detained in the parking lot. Officers say they found meth all over the inside of her car and that the woman admitted to police to going to the residence on Jackson Keller to buy drugs. Now, police did not say what charges that woman will face and they say they'll continue to investigate that residential area on Jackson Keller. Live from the north side, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Stephanie. Also new this morning, a person's died in a motorcycle crash overnight. The Bear County Medical Examiner confirming it happened around 11 o'clock last night. We have video of that scene happened on southbound 410 in between Palo Alto and South Sarzamora. The highway was closed overnight, but has since reopened. San Antonio police have not released any more information at this time, but we will be updating you on this story throughout the day. A San Antonio police officer is alive after he was shot in the chest after a traffic stop. Now, this happened around 630 last night near Southwest Military and Logwood Avenue. San Antonio Police Chief William McManus says the officer pulled a driver over when one of the passengers got out and started to run. The officer started to chase him, but that suspect turned around and shot the officer multiple times. One of those bullets hitting him directly in his body camera on his chest, stopping the bullet. A witness says he is happy the officer is still alive and hopes that suspect learns from this incident. Until they get a knock in their heart from God to change 
their course, it's not going to happen mm -hmm. because there's just, they, they can't see any other way. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm just hoping that maybe this can be something for him to change. Mm -hmm. We are told the officer shot back at the suspect who was taken to the hospital. Meanwhile, the driver and another passenger were taken in for questioning. Mayor Ron Nierberg says the positivity rate in San Antonio is now at 4.9%. That is below the 5% goal he outlined in order for more schools and businesses to reopen. In the daily briefing last night, local health officials also reported 68 new cases of COVID here in Bear County. That drops our seven day average to 136 cases per day. Right now, Metro Health urging everyone to answer calls from contact tracers and to answer the questions truthfully to make sure the date the city has is accurate. Governor Greg Abbott says he will be announcing more openings soon as the state shows signs of recovery from the coronavirus. The governor tweeted the announcement yesterday. He pointed to hospitaliz hospitalization trends, the number of new cases, and the positivity rate as a way to reopen the state. Though the governor did not specify what would reopen, he did hint that bars could be next on the list. His tweet included an image of uh, clinking beer mugs, and he signed off on the tweet saying, cheers. San Antonio City Council will return to in-person meetings on Thursday for the first time in three months. Mayor Nuremberg says a A session meetings where the council votes will be in person. However, B session meetings where the council receives in-depth briefing, briefings rather will still be virtual. Council members will be separated by plexiglass dividers and will get their temperatures taken. This also means public comments will be given in person instead of over the phone. We have more information right now on KSAT.com. And this year's National Night Out will be very different than years past. Because of the pandemic, there will be a drive through event. Now, that event taking place today at 6 o'clock in the evening. Families can drive through the Family Service Neighborhood Place on Riva Street, and volunteers will put items in their trunk. You can pick up bags filled with hygiene items, school supplies, food, and family activity kits. But you do need to pre-register, and you can find that link on our website at kset.com. To politics now, organizers taking extra safety measures for the upcoming vice presidential debate in Salt Lake City, Utah. Vice President Mike Pence and Democratic VP nominee Senator Kamala Harris will be separated by plexiglass during the event. The two will also be 12 feet apart on stage. Some health experts still say Vice President Pence should not attend if the debate the debate if he has been in close contact with President Trump or anyone else who recently tested positive. Vice President has tested negative for COVID. The debate is scheduled for tomorrow night at 8 o'clock. Back here at home, one of the big races to watch is Texas Congressional District 23. The winner will replace U.S. Representative Will Hurd. Kasich is hosting a debate between Democrat Gina Ortiz Jones and Republican Tony Gonzalez. It is scheduled for Thursday at 7 p.m. And we want to hear what your questions will be for both candidates. So just head to KSAT.com and look on our homepage to submit your questions. Right now it is nine minutes past the hour, 66 degrees. And a new discovery could give scientists a look at the genes of early humans. We're gonna see what researchers found on the slopes of Mount Vesuvius in Italy. No, what is it, Mark? You, you, you were so close. I was so close. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so far. Yeah. <laughs> Alcohol sales are up during the pandemic, but the increased business could negatively impact health. We'll look at ways you can get help if you need it. And taking a look out with live cam this morning, it is a, a nice 66 degrees. Enjoy this morning. It'll warm up a little bit just today, hitting the 80s. We're going to check in with Mike to see what we can expect for the rest of your week. Welcome back, 613. Alcohol sales are up thanks to stress brought on by, by the coronavirus. And while that may be a good thing for local businesses, it's not such a good thing for your health. Max Massey explains why we're seeing the increase and what you can do to get help if you need it. Drinking alcohol to try to relax and de-stress is nothing new, but a new study in the Journal of American Medical Association shows Americans over 30 have been drinking even more than usual during this pandemic compared to last year. And health experts say that could lead to many unwanted consequences down the road. 
According to an article published by CNN, overall alcohol consumption increased by about 14% from 2019. That averages out to about one additional drinking day per month in about 75% of adults. Health experts say that excessive alcohol can lead to a weakened immune system and can even cause what's called acute respiratory distress syndrome. Experts are also worried about substance use disorder since more people are stressed these days. They say that with increased isolation at home, having to help with stay-at-home school, and other factors like the election and natural disasters, more people are likely to increase their drinking levels. Doctors say finding healthier ways to cope with stress, like exercising and finding a hobby, can help prevent substance use issues taking a hold of you. Maintaining a regular schedule and getting enough sleep can also help. If you need more help, physicians say even more assistance can be found through telehealth and virtual support groups. Experts even say reaching out to family and friends a great option. Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. It is now exactly 615. And our officer Nick Solis has been tracking an accident northbound 35 all morning. How's it looking now? Still blocked off there, Steph. We got one lane that's actually open, though. That's good, but a lot of heavy to moderate traffic. 35 northbound going towards San Marcos. If you are headed to San Marcos for work, Austin area, then expect a delay still as traffic has gone from very moderate to heavy, heavy traffic there, even on the access road. Now, this accident just came in just south of there. This is northbound IH 35 North Access Road at Cibolo Valley Drive. Looks like a two vehicle accident there on that access road. Don't think it's going to cause any um, delays, though. But just keep that in mind if you are in that direction. All right, here's the accident here. Look at that red there. And uh, we have uh, trans guide footage of it. But uh, we have this uh, construction I want to show you, too, as well. It's 10 at Bernie stage here. Still, look at those uh, westbound lanes are flowing, but the eastbound lanes still closed down at I-10. Just keep that in mind. And like I said, that accident on 35 North, one lane is open, but still very heavy traffic. We'll need to watch out for that. Thank you, Nick. And now Mike joins us with a bus stop forecast. Yes, indeed. Uh, it's kind of mild out there. I think you can, except in parts of the hill country, uh, in and around town, you can get away without a, a jacket this morning because it's a little bit on the, the milder side. Come on, where's the bus? Is it not getting going this morning? Well, darn. Sorry about that. Missed the bus. Anyway, take a look at this picture right now. And I had all the right buttons pushed, I think. Anyway. Pardon me? I'll go to the way. I'll be the bus for you. Okay, you'll be the bus for me. Okay. Hey, beautiful uh, afternoon. Look at that in Landa Park. How pretty is that? Oh, thank you very much for the KSAC Connect picture. All right, here's a look outside and uh, not bad view. We're not obviously seeing the uh, glow of the sunrise as of yet. It's going to be about another half an hour or so. And as far as... Uh, Visibility, it has continued to drop down now at Randolph down to just a half mile, four at uh, Pleasanton, nine New Braunfels, but you get to watch it around Randolph. And then also a lot of times Stinson will start to see some of this fog trying to develop. So for the next uh, at least couple of hours and up until about sunrise or just after that, we're going to have to be dealing with some of this fog. And as a matter of fact, Randolph has the, uh, the thickest fog as of right now. Victoria at just a mile and a quarter. This just updated. I want to go back. You know, Randolph is still at uh, just a half mile visibility right there, but Pleasanton is at five as of right now. Here's what the uh, dew point temperatures or excuse me, air temperatures are looking like right now. 66 in town, 68 at Randolph and high temperatures today are going to be getting up into the upper 80s. So we're looking at 20 to 25 degrees. Think back to last week when we had the really dry air in here, the cooler temperatures, we were seeing 35 to 40 degree swings in temperatures. So that's what the humidity and the big difference it makes. You don't get the extremes when you have higher humidity around here because it doesn't allow temperatures to drop down and then it takes a little bit more energy to uh, to heat up. All right, in the tropics and all eyes are on the Caribbean right now. This was, well, still basically Basically, technically is gamma, but um, it's just a post tropical system right now. But Delta is really starting to rear its ugly head. 100 mile per hour winds. It has been gaining strength all morning long. A category two storm right now. It is forecast to become a category three and then jump to a category four very quickly in probably about the next uh, 12 to 18 hours moving into the Gulf of Mexico as a three slash four storm and then make that turn up in toward Louisiana by sometime Friday into Saturday. Now it's going to avoid with the latest track going to make that turn and avoid us with this though path. It may throw a couple of showers in our extreme eastern counties, but obviously this is still a few days off and things can change. So we're 
obviously going to be watching this very, very closely over the next couple of days. Today, 80 at noon, sunny skies, and then high temperature today up to 89, about 5 degrees above normal. Just enough humidity to notice it. Also, there is an ozone action day in effect today for the metropolitan area. Tomorrow, more of the same, mid 60s and then up into the upper 80s. And then we're going to be looking at uh, some 90s and mid 90s by the weekend. Friday, maybe a couple of showers well off to the east, thanks to uh, Delta. But uh, yeah, it's going to be hot this weekend, about 10 degrees above normal. Front should move through later in the day on Monday. So if you've been putting off the yard work till this weekend, be prepared. It's going to feel quite a bit like summer out there. Oh yeah, and, and just enough humidity to notice it. All right. All right, thank you, Mike. We will operate like we do in the summer and start early in the morning. Well, that's a good idea. 619, 66 degrees. And if you are in the market for a used car, prices are starting to drastically increase. Here is your secret word of the day. Enter it on ksat.com slash circle K for a monthly chance to win free gas for a year. Every entry wins a medium coffee. Win with Circle K and GMSA. These are real people, not actors, who've got their eczema under control. With less eczema, you can show more skin. So roll up those sleeves and help heal your skin from within with Dupixent. Dupixent is the first treatment of its kind that continuously treats moderate to severe eczema or atopic dermatitis, even between flare-ups. Dupixent is a biologic and not a cream or steroid. Many people taking Dupixent saw clear or almost clear skin and had significantly less itch. Don't use if you're allergic to Dupixent. Serious allergic reactions can occur, including anaphylaxis, which is severe. Tell your doctor about new or worsening eye problems, such as eye pain or vision changes or a parasitic infection. If you take asthma medicines, don't change or stop them without talking to your doctor. So help heal your skin from within and talk to your eczema specialist about Dupixent. If your financial situation has changed, we may be able to help. In this morning's GMA First Look, it's becoming one of the most popular pandemic purchases. We have people out on the street actually knocking on doors, buying cars and trucks. Demand skyrocketing for used cars. A Ford Mustang's average price up more than $2,500. A Jeep Wrangler up over $3,700. And a GMC Sierra truck increasing more than $4,900, all in just three months. And finding a great deal can be a bumpy ride. It's definitely overwhelming. You look and you search. So what's the key to navigating your purchase? First, don't be afraid of a high mileage car. Um, 100,000 miles today means virtually nothing. But that's not the only tip. Coming up at 7 a.m., we'll tell you everything you need to know about getting a used car you'll love without breaking the bank. With your GMA First Look, I'm Becky Worley, ABC News, Oakland, California. And three scientists will share the Nobel Prize in Physics this year for their work in cosmology. The award was announced this morning in Sweden. A Sweden, a British scientist, won the award for his discovery that black hole formation is a prediction of Einstein's general theory of relativity. A German and American scientist also won for the discovery of a massive black hole at the center of the Milky Way galaxy. A team of researchers in Italy have discovered the brain cells of a man who died 2,000 years ago still intact. The victim died in the eruption of Mount Vesuvius in the year 79. Research published in the New England Journal of Medicine said that an anthropologist saw glassy material inside the skull. The team found the victim's brain turned glass-like due to intense heat followed by rapid cooling during and after the eruption. They were able to find incredibly well-preserved cells. Researchers hope the finding will allow them to study the genes of ancient humans. Apple preparing to launch new audio products. The company has removed headphones and wireless speakers from several of its rivals from its website and stores, including Bose. Now, Apple is expected to launch its own headphones and a new smart speaker soon. Christmas coming very early this year for retailers. Best Buy, Macy's, and Target starting their traditional Black Friday sales this month. And to prepare for the online rush, even jewelry stores are boosting warehouse staff to handle deliveries. And Instagram is celebrating 10 years of existence. The photo sharing app is marking its first decade with new features meant to encourage kindness. Among them, new warnings that tell users their accounts will be disabled if they break rules and repeatedly post mean comments.
In morning sports, Houston Texans fired Bill O'Brien as both head coach and general manager yesterday. Comes after he started the season with four losses. Worst start in franchise history. Texas chairman and CEO Cal McNair says he believes the players and staff can turn the season around. However, O'Brien traded the team's first and second round draft picks this year and traded a star wide receiver. Both moves were widely scrutinized in the offseason. NFL Network reports that current assistant head coach Romeo Crennel will take over as their interim head coach. And time now, 626 and 66 degrees for now. President back at the White House this morning after being discharged from Walter Reed Medical Facility, but some health professionals are criticizing the decision to let the president leave the hospital. And what time you drink your coffee in the morning could have a big impact on your blood sugar. We're going to find out why it may be important to wait a little longer before pouring yourself a cup. Hills police have arrested a woman who led them on a chase early this morning and they also found meth inside her car. Good morning, I'm Sarah Acosta. Why Castle Hills police say they continue to investigate a residential area in the city. Coming up, the president is back at the White House after spending nearly three days at the hospital. I'm Andrew Dimmer in Washington, D.C. with the latest. Outside with live cam may have some fog in parts of the case at 12 viewing area. Tough to see much in this live cam shot right now. And Mother Nature is cranking up the afternoon heat. Mike will tell you if that trend will continue. And a good morning to you. It is Tuesday. It is October 6th. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. They definitely uh, that picture was not clear, so that's a I guess a sign of things this morning. Where has uh, visibility been affected by a little bit of fog this morning, Mike? Mainly off to the east. Uh, we're starting to see some in East Bear County right now, and even in this picture, uh, it looks like I know it's kind of hard to see right now until the sun comes up, but it's it's a little bit. Uh, a little bit kind of fuzzy looking and uh, as far as temperatures we are at 66 right now and the dew point dew point and temperature are getting very close we haven't had a lot of clouds overnight and then there's not much wind to deal with so we're getting the ingredients there to see some of this fog uh, form up Randolph well has now gone up to three miles visibility is down to a half mile however Stinson has dropped down now to two and a half miles Pleasanton five New Braunfels nine so uh, you're gonna have to watch out for some of this over the next couple of hours especially as we approach sunrise and then right after that a lot of times that's when we get our thickest fog mile and a quarter Victoria two and a half Gonzales as well as the Grange and even a hint of fog up around Austin so pretty much um, say east of I-35 is where the majority of it is showing up as of right now ragweed is high mold is low ozone action day as well today and uh, throughout the rest of today we have those few clouds that fog and basically east of I-35 and then more sunshine later on today. Upper 80, so it's definitely going to be on the warm side by about, uh, say, 5 degrees or so above normal. And we will continue this warming up throughout the rest of the week. And it's going to be uh, basically a hot weekend. Details on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. And Officer Nick Salee has been a busy morning because up on 35. Is that still going on? That is still going okay. on right here, Mike. Look at that. Look at the red here. So moderate, heavy, heavy traffic going northbound 35 right now at Watson Lane. We've been dealing with this all morning. It's a uh, 18 wheeler accident where the 18 wheeler uh, spilled fuel on the main lanes there. A lot of traffic at first when we came in, the whole th the highway was shut down or the, um, the northbound lanes were shut down. Now one lane is open and that's it. So still causing heavy traffic there. Expect a delay if you are heading towards the San Marcos Austin area right now as this is still an active scene and they're still working to get that 18 wheeler out of the roadway. Drive times 10 westbound from the northwest side of I 35 to 1604. You got a 12 minute ride. And if you're I 10 eastbound from the northwest side of 1604 to IH. 35, 13 minutes, looking really good there if you're heading those directions. All right, 1604 at Old Hausman looks good right now. 90 at 36 flowing smoothly, no more construction there. And we'll do one more here. 10 at Hewerman, look at those eastbound lanes right now. Expect a delay if you are headed in that direction on I-10. Mark, back to you. Thank you, Nick. Officers say meth was found inside a car of a woman who led Castle Hills police on a chase across the north side this morning. Our Sarah Coast live at Bassey and West Avenue where that chase ended. Sarah, do we know what charges that woman will be facing? Good morning, Mark. Police didn't say what charges she'll be facing, but they did say they will continue to investigate an area where this all started. Castle Hills police say that they had been keeping an eye on a residential area after getting calls about possible drug trafficking. 
A woman left that area this morning and noticed officers watching her. Police ran the plates of her car and it came up stolen. When police attempted to pull her over, she led them on a chase down to McCullough, where police say she almost wrecked out her car at the baseball fields on McCullough and Bassey. However, she was able to keep driving on Bassey until her tire shredded on West Avenue and she was detained in the parking lot. Now, officer did, did say that they found meth in the inside of that woman's vehicle and that the woman did admit that she had gotten drugs from that residence on Jackson Keller that where they will continue to investigate. Live from the north side, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Morgan Stephanie. Well, after spending nearly three days at Walter Reed Medical Center for COVID-19, President Donald Trump is back at the White House. But there is plenty of criticism over the president's doctor signing off on his discharge from health professionals to Joe Biden on the campaign trail. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has more. This morning, President Trump is back at the White House, released from the hospital, discharged by doctors at Walter Reed Medical Center, going up a set of stairs to a first floor balcony, President pausing to take off his mask, even though he's still contagious, and giving two thumbs up before posting Don't this video about the virus on Twitter. Don't be afraid of it. You're going to beat it. We have the best medical equipment. We have the best medicines, all developed recently. Trump spent nearly three days at the hospital receiving treatments typically reserved for the most serious COVID diagnosis, including steroids and antibody therapy. Trump then suggesting, without evidence, that he may be immune to the infection. I know there's a risk, there's a danger, but that's okay. And now I'm better and maybe I'm immune. I don't know. The president is still believed to be positive for COVID-19, but his physician says he supports Trump's release from hospital care while acknowledging there still may be risks. He may not entirely be out of the woods yet. Dr. Anthony Fauci reacting to the president's situation on CNN. You're not out of it until you've gone several days out and doing well, but he certainly does look very well. Shortly after President Trump arrived back at the White House and removed his mask, Joe Biden told an NBC town hall that Trump still doesn't get the bigger picture. Now, what is this macho thing? I'm not going to wear a mask. What's the deal here? Be patriotic, for God's sake. Biden continuing his criticism of Trump, saying point blank, the president bears responsibility for catching COVID. Look, anybody who contracts the virus by essentially saying masks don't matter, social distancing doesn't matter, I think is, is, is responsible for what happens to them. And Trump will continue to receive around-the-clock medical care, according to the White House, and physical access to the president will be limited with those near him required to wear personal protective equipment. Andrew Dimber, ABC News, Washington. In your morning headlines, the Eternal Revenue Service extending the deadline to register to receive economic help during the pandemic. The IRS says millions of people could still be waiting on their $1,200 stimulus check. That's because the IRS uses tax filings to send out the checks. But they say some of the people who need the help the most do not make enough money to file taxes. They created a special portal for anyone who has not filed taxes uh, register to get the aid. It was a Supposed to close on October 15th, but will now stay open until November 21st. To register, you can go to irs.gov. The Trump administration looking to spend millions of dollars to paint part of the southern U.S. border wall black. That's according to U.S. Customs and Border Protection. A section of wall that could get repainted stretches 82 miles down the Rio Grande Valley. Agency says a black coating could have operational benefits like adding a contrast against the natural surroundings of the area. President Donald Trump told officials that he wanted the wall to be painted black during an Oval Office visit meeting last year. Nearly 100 people in Los Angeles, California, marched throughout the night to demand the U.S. government do more about the violent fighting between Armenia and Azerbaijan. CNN reports dozens of people have been killed and hundreds more have been injured since fighting broke out between the two countries last week. The two countries are reportedly fighting over a territory between them. The former Soviet countries are located just south of Russia and north of Iran and Turkey. The U.S. government has not intervened in the conflict as a member of the United Nations. Los Angeles is home to the nation's largest population of Armenian immigrants. New research shows a staggering amount of plastic may be at the bottom of the ocean floor. Australia's National Science Agency estimates 14 million metric tons of microplastics have accumulated on the seafloor. 
That is 35 times as much plastic believed to be floating on the surface. Agents used a robot submarine to take samples from the seafloor to get the results for their study. In your morning consumer news, Dallas-based Southwest Airlines tightening its wallet in order to save jobs. The company's CEO says he will introduce pay cuts for management. He's also seeking to negotiate concessions for workers. Since an immediate federal stimulus is unlikely, some airlines have announced layoffs and furloughs. Southwest says they are trying to prevent that from happening. Lowe's Home Improvement Stores want to make sure Halloween is not canceled this year. The warehouse store is offering drive through curbside trick-or-treating. Families can register in advance on the company's website to reserve a spot. Then they drive up, get some candy and a pumpkin. Costumes are encouraged but not required. There are 10 Lowe's stores around San Antonio. Whataburger is getting into the spicy chicken business. The San Antonio-based fast food chain is now selling its own spicy chicken sandwich. It's a marinated fried chicken filet with lettuce, tomatoes, pickles, and mayo on a toasted bun. Whataburger says this new offering is now being served at all locations in-store, curbside, or for delivery. KSAC Community partnering with University Hospital and Bear County Precinct 2 Commissioner Justin Rodriguez to host a drive through flu shot drive. The event's taking place this Saturday from 9 to 2 at Nelson Wolf Stadium. There will be 1,000 flu shots available. Most major insurance uh, are accepted and the shot will be free if you do not have any health insurance. You can learn more about this on KSACCommunity.com. And time now is 640 and 66 degrees for now. It could be the best thing in the morning after a rough night's sleep. That cup of coffee could cause some problems if you drink it at the wrong time. We'll tell you when you should have that first cup of joe after the break. Most of us wake up and go straight for that cup of coffee. Some of us even set the coffee maker so it's freshly brewed the moment our alarm goes off. But one study suggests you should wait just a bit longer before enjoying that morning cup of joe to help prevent diabetes. Researchers in the United Kingdom say you shouldn't drink coffee the moment you wake up. The study looked at 29 people who drank a strong black cup of coffee about an hour after getting up to see how it affected a person's metabolism and blood sugar levels. Findings suggest that a, a cup of joe, if consumed before breakfast, has a negative impact on your body's ability to control its blood sugar levels. And doctors agree that elevated blood sugar levels increase the risk of conditions like heart disease and diabetes. The researchers say there is an easy fix if you have a bad night's sleep. Just make sure you eat breakfast before you enjoy your morning cup of coffee. Try to remember that, brother. We'll try to remember. I'll that. try. I don't know. That's like my, my habit. First thing, coffee. Uh, we get it. Trust me. 645, <laughs> 66 degrees. Let's check back with Nick Solis about that accident on northbound 35. Yeah, still there. If you're headed uh, 35 north towards San Marcos and Austin, expect a a delay right when you hit FM 306 and beyond as this uh, accident uh, with the 18-wheeler has still continued to cause traffic delays there. One lane is open, but still causing a big delay. Here we go. This is 37 at Indian Hills here, 37 at Carolina looking good. Let's see if I can find I-10 at Huberman. There's 35 at Watson Lane. This is the accident I've been talking about. Wrecker's still there trying to get that 18-wheeler off the roadway. Look at 10 in Huberman here. I don't know if this is because of the traffic pill pick up on those eastbound lanes, but right now, you expect a delay if you are heading eastbound I-10 towards 1604. This traffic is very built up right now and it's not looking good there. So uh, if you probably have to leave for work right now if you have to head down I-10 because it's not looking good. You know, people that drive in that area are going, hey man, this is normal for this time of day. <laughs> <laughs> Inbound 10 out there by the Dominion, it's always a mess. Yeah. Always, all the time. Once hopefully they get HOV open and everything, it'll start to become more smoothly it, flowing. Hopefully. It's looking good out there. I was out there on Saturday. Still yeah. looking really good. They're making progress. Yes, they are. Very good. Mike joins us now. One of our regular contributors to, yeah. to KSAC Connect is Mr. Roger Olson. And usually a lot of uh, bird pictures, but yeah. this was a great one from a couple of days ago. On the first one, we had the uh, the full moon and the uh, harvest moon rising behind a little country church in Lavernia. That's a great picture. Thank you very much for the uh, KSAC Connect picture. Uh, one thing we can see in this shot, usually there's a few more lights off in the uh, the distance there, but there's a little it's a little bit of almost looks like wants to be some fog. Stinson has dropped down to uh, just three quarters of a mile visibility right now. 
Pleasanton is down to zero. Four at Randolph. That actually improved over the past uh, about hour. And then more fog off to the east. But obviously the thickest is going down 37 in toward Atascosa County as of right now. We've got temperatures 66 in town. Normal low is 63. So in the ballpark, comfortable in the hill country. But then look at these numbers, for instance. Randolph 68, 65 at Stinson. And the dew point temperatures 68 and 65. So 100% humidity there. We had some clear skies earlier this morning. That's been allowing the heat to escape out of space and no wind to deal with. And so those are a couple of factors that really contribute to the fog, which is uh, settling in there right around Stinson and then going down south into Pleasanton. All right, latest check on Hurricane Delta and this thing came into work this morning. It was just barely a category one hurricane. Now it's a category two. This is as of four o'clock this morning, and it's going to continue to gain a lot of strength getting up to three and then four status by late today and then in the overnight hours moving into the Gulf of Mexico over the next couple of days. It'll uh, kind of fluctuate between three and four strength as it continues in and then makes that right hand turn up in toward Louisiana. This would be by Friday morning and then it looks like it's going to be making landfall sometime later in the day on Friday as either a category two or three storm. It's going to be a strong almost on the verge of being a major hurricane. It looks like right now when it makes landfall there in Louisiana. With this path, it may throw a couple of showers back into our eastern counties on Friday. Just a, there's one computer model that's trying to indicate that that there could be some wraparound. Obviously, the majority of the rain is going to be on the right hand side in relation to the direction of travel of that storm. This is today's, you know, there's still that cone of uncertainty if it goes a little bit further to the west. We could see more rain in some of our eastern counties. But again, this is the, the forecast for today. It's definitely something I have to keep watching for the next couple of days. 80 today at noon, sunny skies, and then a high temperature today up to 89, about 5 degrees above normal, and just enough humidity to where you can notice it. And we've got obviously that fog to deal with this morning. And then the next couple of days, warm in the morning, kind of mild, and then very warm in the afternoon. And we'll be getting up into the mid 90s, 10 degrees above normal by the weekend and perhaps a couple of showers well off to the east on Friday. Columbus Day weekend already. Yep. We will prepare. Thank you, Mike. <laughs> right now it is 649. And teaching can be a rewarding profession, but these days many educators are facing the added pressure of working in the classroom and teaching students at home. Tomorrow on GNSA, we're going to take a closer look at how students are affected when they see that a teacher is visibly stressed. Let's try to take a look outside with live cam. And uh, Mike was uh, tell talking to us about fog. Yeah, hard to see much of anything right now since we're still waiting on the sun to come up over South Texas. The news you need to know before you go is still ahead. Good morning, coming up here on GMA, our ABC News exclusive with federal judge Esther Salas, opening up in her first television interview about the lawyer who posed as a delivery driver and killed her son. This morning, the changes that she's demanding and her incredible message of forgiveness. It is all coming up right here on GMA. A suspected drug trafficking situation then led to a car chase in Castle Hills early this morning. Good morning, I'm Sarah Acosta. The woman that led police on that chase ended up having meth in her car and then got arrested by Castle Hills PD. The chase ended at West Avenue and Bassey, but started in Castle Hills, where Castle Hills police say they have been keeping an eye on a residential area after getting calls about a possible drug trafficking situation. A woman left that area that police had been watching this morning and noticed officers watching her. Police ran the plates of her vehicle and realized it was stolen. When police attempted to pull her over, she led them on a chase down to McCullough, where police say she almost wrecked out at the baseball fields on McCullough Avenue. She kept on driving on Bassey until her tire shredded on West Avenue. She was detained in the parking lot. Officers say they found meth all over the inside of her car and that that woman admitted to going to the residence on Jackson Keller to buy drugs. Police did not say what charges she will be facing and they will continue to investigate that residential area. From the north side, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Millions of people around the world get the hiccups. Yes, it can be frustrating, but they can also be painful. Now, though, a local doctor has developed a solution, a new product called Hickaway. I'm Max Massey. I'll explain.
Also coming up at 9, masking up and keeping your distance. Those are the city's COVID-19 protocols. But in their latest investigation, the case at Defenders captured video of city employees doing the exact opposite. Dylan Collier joins us in the studio to debrief his latest story at 9. That's after Good Morning America. It's 5 till. Let's get a traffic debrief from Officer Nick Solis. All right, Mark, right now looking at I-35 at Watson Lane, been giving us trouble all morning. The northbound lanes, if you are headed towards Austin, San Marcos, still expect to delay northbound 35. Mike. Thank you, sir. Hey, in this picture, or this time of the morning, we're starting to see the glow, a little bit of the sunrise. Uh, it's lightening up, but not quite as much. There's a lot more humidity out there this morning and reduced visibility. Quarter mile at Stinson, zero visibility right now. Pea soup fog around Pleasanton, four miles Randolph, six now in New Braunfels, and also a little bit of fog is being picked up out there at the airport as well as at uh, Port SA. So it's starting to kind of invade the area a little bit more. We'll have to watch out for the next uh, at least an uh, hour, hour and a half or so and more fog off to the east. We do have uh, ragweed on the high side, by the way, and temperatures today. We're going to make it up to 89 for a high later on this afternoon. So on the warm side. Thank you, gentlemen, and be careful with the fog. Have a great day. Thanks for joining us. See you back here at nine.